Well, hello everyone. This is Robin Carter and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator out of Flower Mound, Texas. And today I'm going to do, be working on a bundle class with you, as I promised, the Enduring Beauty Bundle. So this is in the new mini catalog that runs from January until the end of April. And I, let me get that. So it, this is the mini catalog from Stampin' Up! and it's on page 38. So as you can see, this not only includes uh, a die, dies and a stamp set, but it also has a set of masks that go along to help you color this image perfectly. And this shows some examples in the catalog of how they did that. Now the bundle number, which I said includes all three, the stamps, dies, and the masks, its bundle number is 162674, and so uh, that's what we're going to be working with today. And um, before I begin, let me take care of some new business to share. So uh, for those of you that are interested in Paper Pumpkin, Paper Pumpkin is a monthly subscription of a crafting supplies and everything that you need to create the cards as designed is in the in the box and it comes straight to your mailbox but um, I like to take it a bit further so if you're new to my channel check out some of my alternative videos as well as my uh, unboxings to get a hint of what paper pumpkin is so since we have a new quarter started April May and June there is also a new set of dies that'll work with this quarters of paper pumpkins. Now these are not required to complete the kits as per design, but it's just if you wanna step yours up a little bit further, you can add these to uh, your order. So April coming up, which the subscription period is going on now until April 10th is gonna be a card kit and it's coordinating colors, Lost Lagoon, Moody Mauve. I'm looking forward to that. Basic Beige. Now, I'm guessing that's a new in color coming. It's listed there, but um, I don't know of a Basic Beige. Then there's Basic Gray, which will be this stamping spot, the little ink spot you get. Basic Black, and there's some Champagne Foil. So don't miss out on that. And like I said, the add-on dies, these are new for this quarter. You get a little label die, and there is stitching around this. A Butterfly and a detailed butterfly, as well as the thanks. And these can be found on the online store, item number 164397. Now, if you're new to Paper Pumpkin, um, I have a link, it's a big long link, of where you can subscribe through me if you do not have a demonstrator. This link will also be in the video description of this video. So uh, all that is there. I do have a new host code for March, so if, Throughout this class, you see some things you might want to add to your collection. If you do not have a demonstrator, I would appreciate your support using this host code. So let's get started. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. I did a short video of using this before, but I thought I would start this one all the way from the beginning in case uh, you don't know what to do. So I'm going to be using a stamp positioning tool, which this is the Stamparatus that uh, Stampin' Up! is no longer able to sell. So um, I'm gonna start with that. Also, before you begin, you might wanna take the dies and cut out two negative pieces. Now, this one's for my Stamparatus. Yes, it's inky, I've used it a lot. And this one is gonna be for the mask. So the one for the mask, you wanna cut about five by seven to start with and then cut out the center uh, with your die. Now, as you can see here, I did, uh, when you, before you cut that out, you wanna look at your dies and your masks because they are labeled and I have lots of tape around this one. So this one is number one. So you're gonna want that in the left-hand corner and it's much easier to see on the leaf one, which is number two, okay? You're gonna want that there. So when you cut your die, it helps to put this big, uh, three bunch of leaves kind of up there towards the top that way uh, you can mark that and you can see here that that's going to go in like that okay so there's just a tip when you cut those all right and I do like let me share tips I do with my dies so when they first come in I run them through my copy machine printer 
and make an image. That way, when I go to put them away, if there's one missing, which I put the number of dies here in the corner, um, and I'm not sure what it looks like, then I can look here and see which one's missing. So this is just a new thing I started recently doing that. All right, so you're gonna want two masks to start with. One's for your Stamparatus and one is gonna be for your masking. So um, let's get started with this. So this is how I position my uh, stamps, you know, making it pretty easy to line up. So I'm gonna find those three stamp leaves again. All right, and I'm just gonna put it anywhere on my Stamparatus. You just don't wanna be close to the edge. And I'm gonna bring it down just because I know of something we may be doing. All right, so pick this up. All right, and then you're gonna to wanna to take any dark ink. Now I happen to have Mossy Meadow here on my desk. So I'm just gonna ink this up real well, pretty well. I need to re-ink this one. Okay, and then I'm gonna stamp directly on my mat. Now, if you don't have this deluxe mat, you could use um, paper, or if you happen to have some grid paper left, I laminated one so that I could use it in my Stamparatus as well. But let's push this down. I think my magnet's getting in the way up there in the corner. All right, let's hope this is inky enough for me to see. I'm getting all kinds of notifications. Let me, probably should silence that. All right, so there is our image. And then I take one of my negatives. Okay, this is it right here. And I can see those three leaves. So I know it goes about here. And then I line it up. I hope my head is not in the camera. I line it up where everything looks centered and then I tape it down. You can also use your magnet to help. I generally don't get two magnets out because I don't, I don't want to risk them slamming together. I've already, one broke already when that happened. So I generally just get one and then I use tape to tape it down. Okay, now you don't have to clean that out because those images will be on the bottom, but I'm going to just to keep it kind of neat. All right, I just squirt some water. I do keep a little, little squirt bottle of water around my desk to work with. Okay, so if you did clean it, just make sure it's back in the corner again. All right, and then you can go cut a whole bunch of plain white uh, flower images for stamping. I have an envelope full of them. Now, by the way, I do, I store them in these envelopes, and if you're new to my channel, I call these things my favorite things, and they're just items that Stampin' Up! does not sell that help me organize my crafting supplies and stamping and cards and all kinds of things. So this is the 5 by 7 and I like to use it to store my card components. Um, there's also 3 by 5 as well as these 7 by 9 ones, which I keep pre-scored and cut card bases in. They also hold memories and more. They're great for paper pumpkin storage. So that's just information on that. So you wanna cut a whole bunch of white ones. Now, as you can see here, I have already stamped several, but let's see how I line this up. So you may have to sacrifice one if you didn't get it perfect. And since my head was not right over the top, I hope this is still going to be centered. <laughs> so let me get my Memento black ink tuxedo black and let's ink this up. Now you also, one thing to note is uh, the stamp case itself works as a good backing for your plate to help hold it up so it's not slanted. Uh, ink pads work as well, but if you have your stamp case there and you don't know what to do with it, stick it under your plate. All right, let's hope I got that good and inked. And let's see how I did from the side getting it centered on my Stamparatus. So again, you can cut as many as these and it helps save paper to do it this way because you're not stamping and then die cutting and having a bunch of wasted space. 
think I got about five per an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. All right, let's see if that looks good. Um, I want a little more ink there on that flower. So I'm just gonna take my little memento I have here and ink that one up. So while you have this position, you probably wanna go ahead and stamp several um, to use. I'll have several finish cards to show you. I like that better and now I don't like this one as much. So <laughs> let's just make those nice and dark. All right, so pretty easy to um, do. And then you have a bunch of these. So you can just cut white ones, stamp, 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 and have a bunch of those ready to go. All right, let me clean my image. Now, as you can see, I've used mine quite a bit. So Memento will stain your photopolymer stamps like a little brownish color. And that doesn't damage your stamp. It just shows that you loved it and you used it. <laughs> so don't fear with that. Okay, for the next thing, I'm going to get out my glass mat. Now, I apologize that this is going to reflect my lights from above, but I really like to use it. Now, this was available uh, for demonstrators to pre-order before celebration. And during celebration, which ended, um, it was a free gift you could get for signing up as a demonstrator. We are hoping that they are going to release this uh, maybe in the new catalog uh, or something like that or an online exclusive item that you can purchase uh, soon. So um, wait on that. Now, if you don't have this, one thing that would work is I have laminated some grid paper or any laminated uh, surface that'll help you with blending your ink. So this is my second one, and this is the larger five by seven, and I'm just gonna adhere it down with some straggling tape on my mat that I keep. All right, all right, so this is gonna hold our image here for coloring. So like I said, there are five masks, and there's a detailed leaf, uh, um, excuse me, the solid leaf and the solid flower are one and two. And then there are detailed leaves that work to fill in the veins and give shadow to the flowers. So it makes it really easy. So let's get started. Now I have used Calypso Coral. So just be aware if you're going to change colors, you're going to want to clean it off because um, <laughs> you will make your own Stampin' Up! colors, which I have done, and they actually turned out quite well. They were um, interesting little hiccups there. All right, so there are any combination of flowers you would like. Uh, when I finish both videos for this class, I will post on my blog uh, some other images that we have. Now, this is mask number one, and notice there's a little knit uh, cutout here. And so when you first line it up, all right, you just wanna find your flowers, okay? And then you're gonna wanna take your pencil and mark that. Now, I don't find that it actually works perfect for each mask just to set right there. Um, it could be the way I niched it, but I, that's a good starting point. One, it gets your mask going in the right direction. And then I center it up along all my flowers. So then you want to adhere this down with either washi or if you're using a glass mat, you can use regular tape. And then you get to pick your colors. So I have done several pretty colors. Uh, for this one, I think I'm going to do a fresh freesia one. So I have kind of one purple. I have started investing in more of these so I can maybe have one for each color, but I'm slowly working on that. So let's find Fresh Freesia. Of course it's on the bottom. So I'm going to do a tone on tone flower. Now you could do two coordinating colors, one light and one dark, but I'm going to use one color here and just brush lightly. So you can either start off on your mask or your glass mat if you want to 
get it started and then just barely even setting the brush down I'm going to start coloring. And I'm going to hold this down it looks like it's moving a little bit my tape might have seen its useful life. Alright so just a light purple color to start with. Whoops, I need to get that in there better. Okay, you know what, I think I'm happy with, I might make it a little darker. All right, so let's hold it in place. Add a little more pressure just with the ink I have left. So there it is. How easy is that to color your flowers? I love that because I'm not much of an artist. So this takes all the guesswork out. Now the next is number two. Now it really doesn't matter what order you do one or two first. Just do your solid masks first. And as I said, that's a good starting point. And once you get it laid down, you can press... Now I'm going to use Old Olive for this one. Probably my next one on the bottom. It is. I'm working backwards today. Now this one, Old Olive, is a favorite color of mine. I do have a blending brush dedicated to it. So again, you want to just start lightly. Now be careful if you um, want to do this or off to the side. And again, I'm just going to start just letting the brush barely sit on the leaves to color them. And as you start working your ink, you want to press harder to get more saturated color, then you can do that. So again, you can pick any of your favorite colors to do this. Okay, again, perfectly colored leaves. So that's one and two. So now I'm gonna dig for three and four. So four is the detailed leaves and three is the detailed flowers. Now, obviously I need to clean this one again. I just squirt it with my water and I have some paper towels over here to the side uh, that I can then dab my mask on, I guess I can show you. Just have some paper towels. I sprayed it to clean it off. This one you wanna be careful with rubbing because there are some very fine um, areas that you could bend. I went ahead and bought me a second set of masks because I already kind of bent one. Um, it, I got it back to where it works, but just in case I totally mess one up, it was good to have a second set of masks. Okay, so again, this gives you a starting point to where to set it so you don't have it upside down or know which way. Also, the number is on the top side. And then I then find my own center for my flowers, and that looks good, centered around. More tape over here. And I'm going to bring back the Fresh Freesia because I was going to do tone on tone. Now, if you don't have full size pads, uh, maybe you've done some kits and have these little blocks sitting around. That's why I have that sitting there to remind myself to share <laughs> that with you. But any block, you could also uh, smash the ink on there and then blend if you just have spots. But I'm going to use my full size because I have those. All right, so I'm going to start off to the side again. And this time, and I'm hoping not to swirl my desk too much. My camera is attached to my desk, and I know it might move uh, when I do movements like this. But I'm going to try my best to not make you too dizzy. Okay, so then you can take a peek. See if you like that. I think I need a little more on, whoops, I didn't tape it back down. On this flower, and maybe right up there. Okay, I like that. So that gives you your shading of your flowers pretty easy. 
and now we can do the detail of the leaves. So again, this gives you a good starting place, and then I center it. Now this one, take note that this also colors the little stems in the flowers, so that'll help you line it up pretty easily, just getting those stems in there. And I'm gonna tape that down. And I'm still gonna do tone on tone and do old olive. And start out lightly, although this is gonna be our heavier ink to show the shading of the veins in the leaves. All right, and then you just wanna work real well inside those stems because they're tiny little places. And you can be as saturated as you like. Let's check out that. I like that, that did well. There's one down here. This bottom one didn't get a lot, so I'm just gonna See if I can add some to him. Okay, so there's our pretty flower. Now, there's no way I would color it that fast with blends, watercolor pencils, or what have you. You know what, I didn't get this one. How did I not get that one done? Anyway, it would take me a lot longer to do this by hand. Okay. All right, there we got him. All right, so that is our flower. Very easy to line up and to color and end up with like you're an artist because I am not an artist. So these are my favorite cards just to put on a uh, embossed piece. I have quite a few here I can show you that I've done before and I can show you the colors. So this one, is just real red, tone on tone. Um, it does look pink, but this was real red. And so I love the look of just putting them on an embossing folder. So uh, I also wanna point out, this is a new embossing folder in the mini catalog, and it's called the Layered Florals 3D. I don't know if you, this shows well, but look how textured that is. It's very raised. All right, and its item number is 162935. So if you wanna take note of that, and it's one that I'm sure I'm gonna, I, I love all embossing folders. I just about get every one of them when they come out. It's such an easy and rarely, uh, pretty inexpensive way to dress up your cards. And that's just how we do it. So let's get a card base out. There's a mini slimline card base I made. All right, score it. And a lot of people, so I've scored it here. You wanna fold it in, okay, to the score. And I'm gonna take away this glass mat just to avoid any more reflecting Set my stuff over here. Because it, it is pretty bright. And I don't know how bright it is for you guys. That's my windy phone folder. All right, burnish the lines. And then you want to feel, I just happened to get it right. This top part seems just a hair bigger. All right, so then I'm going to adhere my embossed layer down. Any embossing folder would work. Now, I do, you're probably like, where's my fine tip glue bottle? When it's this raised, I like to get a little bit more glue on there by using the bottle. Um, for those of you that are new to my channel, I do keep the Tombow multi-purpose glue in a fine tip, which helps me not get too much glue around. All right, so we're gonna hear that down. And then of course, I like to do this on dimensionals. So you can see it goes many different ways. This one, I did with the flower down here. This one, I'm gonna do like this because I'm gonna to wanna to put my sentiment down here. So let's put that up on dimensionals. I cut mine in half, the large ones anyway. 
if the, you get the small ones, I don't cut those in half. They're small enough to work. And you want to be kind of generous. You don't want your image to sink in. All right, give them a little press. Make sure it's down. Take off the backings. So these bundle classes are something new I hope to do this year. So um, I don't know what my next one will be. I'm kind of waiting to see what uh, the new catalog holds and any discontinued products before I work too hard. By the way, I am going to the demonstrator convention this weekend. It's called On Stage. It's my first one to ever go to, so I'm pretty excited. Um, also going with my local downline, so we should have a good time. Now, in the dies, one thing that I really like about them is you get two set of the double leaves and the single leaves, and that makes cutting them easy. Now, I have some pre-cut. I have cards all over my desk. It doesn't take me long to get uh, stuff all over. So give me just a second to work on looking for those. But you can see here on these, I did these in Mossy Meadow, even though I used Old Olive. I just like the more depth that that gives those. Here's some others I made. Same thing with the uh, Real Red. This one is Moody Mauve. Um, also notice these little petals here. They're nice, cute little petals, and they cut all three at once. And there's two of them. So then you can kind of throw those along your flower and or sentiment. Here's a fresh freesia I did earlier. So as you can see, each one's gonna end up just a little bit different. Um, it looks like a totally different color, doesn't it? Maybe I had some other color on there. That one looks more like Highland Heather, but I know that was fresh freesia we used. And then here's a real red. I kind of had an explosion of Winka Stella on this one. So it's, it's nice and bright. But any colors would work. I showed in my first video some that I did with designer series paper. This is a Lost Lagoon with Moody Mauve. So that works as well. Um, I already did the this with my local group and we came up with several good combinations. Here's some more with designer series paper. All right, and this is more Moody Mauve. I was trying to use Moody Mauve because I haven't used it a lot lately, but now that I see that's in the paper pumpkin, hopefully we'll get some use out of it. Now this is this fresh freesia one I did as well, and I had a strip of uh, DSP, which is called designer series paper, to work with on that. So. Here's my little leaves. I stored them in the three by five. So we can tuck these in just to help fill in the flower. I am gonna use my fine tip glue bottle on this one. So this is the basic flower. Now I have several other ways to use this and I'm gonna be sharing it over my two videos. So by the way, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I would really appreciate your subscription. Thank you to those who have already subscribed. Thank you so much for supporting me. I hope you find some good tips and tricks for your paper crafting. All right, so I just like to add three of things. In this die set is also a very pretty label and it works really well with their sentiments, which I love in this uh, bundle as well. So they are, there's a little card sleeve. It's always been you. Love endures all things. You mean so much to so many. <clears throat> Holding you close in my heart and embrace the beauty of you. So any of those work. There's also these teeny tiny little flowers. I haven't tried yet to cut them off, uh, cut them with the uh, dye yet. I imagine they might work with the dye, but if you're gonna use these and use the detail, I find it uh, easier to start with the detail 
But let's put the sentiment on there first. I'm going to use Embrace the Beauty of You. Now I have a foam mat, but this is also the foam when you get the carrying case for the blocks that you take out to store your block in. And it works nice too because it's, it's really firm. It gives just enough for your photopolymer stamps. Okay, ink that up well. And I'm going to try to freehand this. Okay, that did well. That embrace the beauty helped to line up along the stitching there. So that helped. Now if you're going to use this, I'm going to again start with a memento. I'm going to put it right up here in the center. Not center. Right hand top corner. And then I'm going to get out the fill in. Now tips. Don't put these, uh, if you're going to take them off your block, stick them in the case because they are teeny tiny little flowers and you don't want those to go missing. All right. Fresh freesia. Now this I may have to pull closer to me so I can get my head straight around it. But there's three flowers and one of them's more skinny, one of them's fatter, so you just have to work your way around all right let's make sure that's inked well and let's see how i did oh perfect great so that just adds a little flower to my sentiment there uh, if you don't have embossing folders and such these would be cute to stamp all around the card as well i think there's a sample of that in the mini catalog and let's put our sentiment I think I'm going to use dimensionals again just because it's what I love to use. So this would make a nice birthday card. Embrace the beauty of you. Or just an encouragement card. Okay, there we go. Now, of course, you could add more gems. And by the way, I have these, and here's a tip for you when you, if you order these. These are called the Tinsel Gems 3-Pack. So on the label, it tells you nowhere what color these are. But on the online store or in the catalog, it tells you what colors. So I just write that on the flap here so I know what colors they are. So let's use some fresh freesia ones around. Do one there. little one I should use my little um let me get that out so I don't keep the putty end of my take your pick tool this is called the take your pick tool this fits in here but I find I end up wasting a whole lot of the putty so I just keep it separate and use it separate and let's put another large one down here so there you go. How do you like that? And of course, Wink Stella would work nice on the flowers, but pretty quick and easy for a beautiful card that looks like you did a whole lot of work. <laughs> so that is just a basic way to use this bundle. All right, so now I want to share another technique um, that I've, I've done with this bundle. So let me clear off my space a little bit. Try not to lose everything. Here's the thing. And I'm going to show you how to use it as just the masks. So we're not going to do the stamping. We're going to do just a one using the mask. So I need to bring my glass mat back out. Okay, and then you need a blank cut already. Now, I've yet to figure out if I like to do this uh, cut first and then masking. Some of them are a little off. <laughs> so this one may be one you want to color first and then um, cut out. But we're going to, I'm going to try it again this way. Clean off my fresh freesia because we're going to switch colors. I do have a sink by my 
craft room. I'm pretty lucky and I can go clean them off. So actually what I have found, I'm going to start with the solid leaves. And the reason why is see this leaf that pokes out here? It's pretty easy. And again, our mark gives us a starting place of where to start. So you can kind of see the line around where my die is. So let's line that up. There is a start. You also want to look at this little leaf. Okay, let's hope that is more centered. All right, I'm going to tape this one down a little better. I think my tape has seen its useful life. So we're going to start with the leaves, which is number two mask. And this time I'm going to use soft sea foam. I'm going to give this a little soft uh, look against the uh, Calypso coral. So I do have one dedicated to soft sea foam. And hopefully I've re-inked my inks because I've used them. Oh, that's a lot of ink. So I'm going to just barely rub. And you know what? I didn't clean off my, <laughs> my old olive. So let me give me just a second. I'm going to get a... I'm telling you, I have done this and created my own colors. They actually work out okay. Just get okay. Again, if you only have old olive or mossy meadow, any color would work. I just wanted a softer look. Okay, so there is our leaves. Isn't that nice? Did pretty good getting that centered. All right, and then let's do the solid flowers. Again, this notch gives us a good starting point, and then you can line this up along with your leaves. All right, let's, whoops, not quite over just a little. Okay, and I'm going to use Calypso Coral. Again, I'm going to do tone on tone just to keep it simple. You can see I have a blotch of Calypso Coral over here, so I'm just going to blend, get that started, and just barely press down. to get a nice wash of color on those flowers. So we've used one and two. Now three is the detailed one, which I've got to clean off again. If you don't keep a spray, I, I love having my spray bottle. One thing, if you use a Stampin' Scrub, uh, when you put your Stampin' Mist on there to clean your stamps, you can reactivate it by just adding a little water. Okay, now the detail of the flowers. Press, and I didn't get all the water up. Let me get that up. Okay, and now we can work heavier. I'm going to see if I can work with the ink that's over here. Am I swirling the table, the camera? <laughs> okay, let's take a peek. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Okay, now the detail of our leaves, and I'm going to remember to clean this off first. All right, got just a little bit there. And 
and this time there is no black mark of the stems so you have to imagine the stems yourselves and just make sure they're lined up like here with the petals I think that's I think that's good right there All right, I'm going to do the soft sea foam again with a little heavier touch. So what do you guys think about these cards? All right, let's pick that up. I like that. Okay, so Calypso Coral and uh, Soft Sea Foam. Now, the number five mask, um, my preference is not to use it on the one that's stamped. It's just a little too much. But when there's no center to these flowers, it makes a nice touch. So again, you have your notch to make sure you got it right side up. And then you get to put this kind of where you like. Now, you can kind of see this little swirl here, and there's a little swirl there of where to put those. That's what I go by. And then the others will just go where they are. All right, let's go with that. And for this, I use basic gray. I've seen some people use the same color and that works out nice too. But I'm gonna use basic gray. And let's get that started. And I like to go kind of heavy on this so it's nice and dark. Okay, let's take a peek. Okay, I like that. So this is using just the mask. So you wouldn't even have to get, well, I guess to die cut it. I guess you could fussy cut it. But if you wanted to get just the masks and make flowers, that works out well too. So um, I'm gonna show you the one I have finished. And I have another tip to share with you of, uh, of this background. So this background stamp comes from uh, Two-Tone Flora dies, and I have it right here to show you. So this is a favorite set of mine. I haven't done a class. I would love to do a class. I hope it's not retired. Um, it's no longer available as a bundle. It was a bundle in the last mini catalog, but this is the stamps, and here's the dies, and one of the dies is this big background stamp. Now the item number for the dies is 159181. Okay, and then I, here's a tip of when you cut it. So you wanna use adhesive sheets and adhesive sheets are here and there's 12 sheets that are 12 by six. So quite a value of what you get. And the item number is 152334. So you want to cut from your adhesive sheets a full card front, four and a quarter by five and a half. And then you want to put it on your cardstock. And then when you cut it, you cut the top. You want the adhesive sheet on the bottom. And little pieces are starting to fall already. And I'm going to have a mess. Let me get rid of the glass mat when I do this. And it'll just be on my paper. Okay, now the adhesive sheet really helps take all the little bitty bits off. So I left it on the die just so I can show you that there's all these little bits. Okay, but when you start tearing off the adhesive sheet to, to reveal the adhesive, I guess the, the backing, watch, it just kind of takes a lot of those bits with it. 
I think I had to do mine in different pieces because I had a So it really helps you not have to stare and poke all these bits out. Kind of like a little snowfall. All right, so some get hung in the detail of it. So you just have to peel those off. But not quite as many to sit there and pick and poke about. So I don't know if you can see that white on white. Put my hand behind it. But anyway, there's all kinds of little bits you'd have to sit there and punch out. And the adhesive sheet takes 95% of them, or at least loosens them, especially along this little flower. So some people like to poke all of them out. Some people leave a few in. Um, but that's how that works. And look, all that is right here. So there's a little tip of using... Uh, Adhesive sheets with detailed dyes. It not only gets the adhesive on the teeny little parts, but it helps remove the little bits. All right, so let's just sweep all this away. Uh, I need another card base. So what do you guys think about using just the masks? So two daggers of front. Now the hard part is I'm not going to have wiggle room, so I need to get this pretty straight. Start from the side. All right, and then I'll just trim off the side where it hangs over a little bit there. And why is he not wanting to stay down? Probably it's so little. Oh, you know what? I didn't want to do that. Let's see if I can actually get it up. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. I made one in case I messed up, <laughs> which I did. I forgot a step. So um, I wanted to use a color behind there to help it stand out. And I chose petal pink. So again, you'll just put a four and a quarter by five and a half sheet of coordinating cardstock of whatever colors you chose to do your flowers. Look, I was able to get it up. Let's see if it'll still stick. There we go. And then you can put that on your card base. You may want to trim it up where it's nice and square. Okay, and then I took my next favorite set of dies that I hope don't retire. It's the scallop contour dies. I use these a whole bunch in creating layers. I think it's so pretty. Um, the item number for this is one five five six, three five. So one five 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 six zero. And one tip for these is I keep a little sheet in here of how big the mat is in case I want to create a mat inside. But we're just gonna set this right on here. I didn't want a white mat. I think the border around the flower is nice enough. Let me follow my finished one. I even did another one before class in case I really messed it up. You can see just a slight difference in color. I did that one lighter. Okay, and here's the finished card. This one I did cut out little soft sea foam leaves to add detail around. I kind of like it there so that leaf can go there. And that's how I finished off that card with the same sentiment and then some bling. So how do you like this card? All right, so let's see our time. Okay, that is pretty good amount of time to take of you today. And so my next video, I will share some other alternative ways to use uh, this bundle to make some beautiful cards. So the best compliment you can give me is a thumbs up and share this with your paper crafting friends and leave me a comment. If you are new to my channel and subscribe, please let me know you've subscribed. Um, I like to at least read all those and reply. Um, even just a thank you for helping me. I have set a hefty goal for myself this year. I hope to double my subscribers and reach 5,000. So if you can be a part of that and help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. I also like to hear what area you are from. 
Um, I find that interesting. So until my next video, I'm trying to clean up a little here as I gab. Thanks for joining me and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.